Hello ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence and welcome back to another video everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in and in this video we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 favorite fragrances for the year of 2015. Now that 2015 is behind us, we can really retrospect and take a look at all of the fragrances that were released within the past year and we can make some pretty good assessments as to which ones are our favorites and which ones are not. So for this reason, it is going to be a subjective list because this is only going to be based on what my favorites are. Not how much they sold, not how much attention they've received, not how many bottles went flying off the shelves, but which ones do I like to wear, which ones have I worn the most, which ones do I look forward to wearing the most. So with that being said, these are all going to be designer fragrances. I think I'm going to have a separate niche list if I get enough to put in that list. Uh, but this is a list that I compiled myself. Now, I also want to mention that I haven't smelled every fragrance that was released in 2015. Um, there is one that I've been really wanting to smell, which is by Yves Saint Laurent, and it's called La Nuit de Lump L'Intense. I've heard a lot of really good things about that fragrance online. Unfortunately, I still haven't gotten my nose on it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the list. No honorable mentions, but we are going to start off with number 10. So the number 10 fragrance on this list, the only reason I it's so low on this list is because I found that it was a little bit of a redundant purchase for me. And that's because it bears a lot of similarities to the original. And the fragrance that I'm talking about is Givenchy Pie Extreme. Now, honestly... The only time when you can really tell the difference between this and the original is when you do a side-by-side -side spray. Other than that, if you, somebody's wearing it, you're smelling it in the air, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference. It just smells like pie. This one I do think is a little bit richer. I think it has like a leathery overtone. It's a little deeper, not more complex. It's the same linearity, but I just feel like in many ways it was a redundant purchase. And I think Givenchy is just trying to capitalize on the extreme labeling. Uh, the next one on this list is a little bit low on this list because it wasn't a favorite of mine. I actually uh, don't care too much about this fragrance, even though I will admit it is a unique scent. And I think it's a very different release from the other fragrances that this company has been releasing within this line. And this is Dark Rebel by John Verbatos. Now, there are some very sharp, astringent notes. I believe Juniper Berry is listed as a note as well. And I just don't fancy it that much. So for that reason, it's a little bit low, but it is a more daring and complex release. The next one on this list is by Dolce & Gabbana and it's called Intenso. Now it's low on this list for some of the same reason that this one is kind of low on this list uh, because it does smell very similar to the original. Again, if you do a side by side, you can tell the differences. But I also think that the note breakdown is a little deceptive too. Like some unique wood notes, there's the, the note of bran. But honestly, I don't think it translates too accurately to the actual smell. So with that being said, I do find that it was kind of a, rele uh, a redundant release. Again, trying to capitalize off the Intense logo. Number seven on my list is a scent that I actually do enjoy a lot. I have been wearing this one a lot. And it's by Calvin Klein. It's not the only release uh, that I've enjoyed by Calvin Klein this year. I know Eternity Now was a really good one too with the coconut and the fig leaf sort of a nuance uh, but this one is actually called reveal now this one has aloe vera it has some uh, boozy nuances in the opening too I actually really like this one it's a very unique scent uh, there's only one thing that kind of bugged me out about this scent is that I've got my nose on another one by Beverly Hill Polo Club called Rogue it's in a green bottle and I bought it for like $5.99 at TJ Maxx and it smells almost exactly the same so that's for me it kind of gives me the impression that maybe the ingredients utilized in this composition are not that expensive so it doesn't really need to be that pricey but you could find it online now if you go on fragrancenet.com and i think it's really a solid scent very different and i think it's a unique original release from the house of calvin klein the next one i also enjoy very very much it's just that i like the original a little bit better but i appreciate what they did with this flanker and this is ch for men Privé by Carolina Herrera. Again, it has that sugary uh, nuance in the opening with kind of like an ambery dry down. I believe it also utilizes the note of tobacco. It's a really nice scent. I just don't like it as much as the original, which was like a sugar cane and le uh, leather combination. Very unorthodox blend, but it actually worked really well. I mentioned in my review of this scent that there's something magical that happens in, happens in the opening of the original scent that I don't get from this one. But nonetheless, this is a really good scent um, and it's a compliment get her too. The next one on this list is um, an eau de parfum version of a scent that was released a few years back and this is actually Dolce Gabbana the one 
Eau de Parfum. Now, this one actually bears more differences to the original than Givenchy's Pie Extreme bears to the original. And I know that sounds like a little bit weird to say, but I actually find this to be a fantastic release. It's like a boozier, richer, deeper, more complex, headier version of the original. Um, honestly, with the Eau de Parfum version, and the performance is a little bit better, not all that much better that, you know, it's gonna give you 12 plus hours longevity. No, it won't. It's gonna give you somewhere between six and eight, which is far more what you would get from the original, which was between like three and five or two and five. So this one is actually gonna do much, much better on your skin. But with that being said, I there's really no reason to purchase the original now because the Eau de Parfum version is out. Number four on my list is one of my favorites that were released this year and I wore it a lot this summer. I'm actually looking forward to wearing it next summer so I can be reminded of all the great memories and experiences that I've commemorated this past summer. It's actually a flanker to Angel Men and it's called Angel Men Ultra Zest by Thierry Mugler. This is, I dubbed it as the orange creamsicle, and it does kind of bear that vibe. It has a little bit of vanilla, it has a little bit of orange. It's also this patchouli note in the background that's very iconic of uh, Angel Men compositions within the line. I think it's a fantastic flanker, and it definitely garners compliments as well. My wife loves this one. Number three on my list is a fragrance that would be a little bit lower on some other people's lists just because they find it unoriginal, uninventive, but this is by far one of the biggest compliment getters that I have in my entire collection and it's by Dior and it's called Savage. It seems as though every time I wear this somebody gives me a compliment. I actually kept track of all the compliments I received with this one. It, went, it was like upwards of like 15 to 20 and this is like almost every time I wear it I get a compliment it has a really high batting average very simple composition too uh, they only have ambroxan which is a synthetic version of ambergris which is a very expensive ingredient a little animalistic kind of gives off like this staticky undertone it also has bergamot and a little bit of pepper. I don't get that much pepper in here. I do get the freshness and I do get that slightly animalistic, almost musky dry down, fantastic scent. I think it's gonna get far more praise in the years to come. Number two on my list is yet another flanker. This is, uh, it's been the year of the flankers. I hate to say it. So far, the only original releases were John Varvatos and Calvin Klein Reveal, honestly. Oh, and Dior Sauvage. So only three original releases, seven flankers. Uh, but this one is a flanker. It smells different from the original, so I definitely have a lot of appreciation for that. This is Ultramal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So it bears the sweetness of the original, and the original, I don't need to tell you, is a compliment getter. Ladies love it, even though you put yourself at the risk of smelling like her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> but it smells great, and they added the note of pear. So it's this unorthodox sort of composition, but it just, it works so well. I wore it during my bachelor party. I commemorate a lot of really great memories and occasions with it. I love wearing it. I was actually wearing it the other day and I enjoyed it thoroughly. And then the number one fragrance on this, li uh, on this list for this year, I know for a lot of people it might have been uh, Dolce Gabbana the One EDP. For some people it might be La Nuita Lum Lintense. For some people it might even be uh, Dior Sauvage. For me, um, I knew this was going to be number one before I even set out to compile this list. And once I looked at the other competitors, it only reaffirmed how much I still enjoy this scent. And I can't speak highly enough of it. This is Tom Ford Noir Extreme. Despite the extreme designation or the label, it smells very different from the original Noir. This has the note of Kulfi, which is like a like, a, like a, a Middle Eastern dessert, and it has some flavors like, um, it could be like rose flavored, it could be like cardamom flavored, it has a spicy nuance to it, but it has a strong vanillic overtone as well, kind of smells like vanilla ice cream, and it also has the note of mastic oil, uh, which is a type of resin, but it has a very bright and airy uh, smell to it, incredibly unique composition. I get a lot of compliments, very high end. I always get complimented when I wear it. You can wear it to a wide variety of occasions. This is an all year round scent and the performance on it is absolutely amazing. The performance on the original Noir was amazing. This one, I don't think it's extreme in terms of how it performs, but I think it's more so the blend of ingredients that I consider to be a little extreme because it is so different and unique. And honestly, Thank you, Tom Ford. Thank you for putting out such an amazing scent this year that we can enjoy for many, 
many years to come. So there you have it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was the fragrance year in review for 2015. These are my top 10 favorite uh, designers or what I think are the best releases categorized in order from most favorite to not as favorite. Some of the redundant releases in the back. So if you own or have tried any of these scents, please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. And please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos. So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Stephen with another video from Red Essence. We'll see you soon.